In this video, I'm going to explain a bit more about creating a quality culture in higher education. I will look into the background and the concept of quality culture, and then I explain a bit more about the main challenges and success factors. Just to start with the background and concept of quality culture. Quality culture is a key discourse within the Bologna process and the European higher education area. There it is presented as an ideal internal quality assurance system, emphasizing the quality improvement above quality control. The implementation of a true quality culture may require changes in the attitude and behavior within both the leadership and the staff of higher education institutions. Within the European higher education area, the concept of quality culture is adopted as a leading concept for uh, all Bologna communiques and in the European Standards and Guidelines of Quality Assurance. It has hereby a clear parallel with the concept of total quality management, especially in the sense that it involves all stakeholders, staff and students, that it focuses on improvement and it has a holistic approach towards the institution as a whole. The central philosophical tenet of quality is contextual. This means that an institution must develop quality measures that are concurrent with its internal environment, but also that it must develop quality measures that are concurrent with its external environment. An institution is never just on its own, so the surrounding area of the institution counts as much as what's happening within the institution and its internal and stakeholders are equally important to evolve to create a true quality culture. To develop a true quality culture, an institution must also take into account the time dimension. This means that what works in the early stages of development and what can be seen as good practices is not necessarily also uh, an example of good practice in the later stages of quality culture. For example, you can start with developing quality culture by identifying certain quality champions, so lecturers or departments that are doing particularly well. But at some point, you would expect that this would be implemented throughout the institution. So then what were once good practices may not be such good practice anymore. So this is an important part to take into account as well in the longer term planning of quality culture. A key element of quality culture is the role of stakeholders. As I explained before, we're talking about both internal and external stakeholders that all play a role in developing a, a true quality culture and a true process of continuous improvement of quality within the institution. The idea of quality culture is that all stakeholders are empowered within the higher education institution. It stresses the importance of a grassroots development of quality rather than a top-down approach. In other words, quality is made by the, by the teachers, by the students, by those who create the educational process itself. And this needs to be encouraged and uh, allowed by uh, institutional management to, to happen. It's also important to realize that students play a key role in embedding quality throughout their regular evaluation of teaching and learning and their involvement in decision-making bodies. When it comes to external stakeholders, their contribution is of course different from the internal stakeholders but they especially have a useful perspective on the institutions, especially coming from outside. And therefore they can serve as a reality check and enrich the debate about quality and about what the institution should do to improve this. Then a few of the common challenges of implementing a quality culture. Within the institutional quality system, the concept of quality culture may raise certain questions. To start with, there's a question of ownership. It's not always easy to create ownership for quality culture by the people who live it, with an emphasis on teaching staff. This is a, an important role for the institutional leadership to make sure that this happens and that staff are encouraged to feel the ownership for the quality of, of their own work. There's also a challenge to find the right balance between systemizing standards and operations across an institution on the, on the one hand, while also taking into account the professional concentration of expertise at the grassroots. In other words, one hand you want to have standardization of processes of quality, and the other hand you want to have flexibility and empowerment of staff to be able to do their own work properly, to make their own mistakes and to make their own improvements. A third challenge is that uh, about developing a set of standards that is in line with the institutional mission, 
but that doesn't stifle individual initiatives and departmental diversity. A one-size-fits-all doesn't work within a higher education institution, so this needs to be taken into account when developing the quality measures within the institution as a whole. For many institutions, it's also a challenge to encourage meaningful participation of students and external stakeholders, in particular the regional and the labour market stakeholders. So although it is clear that this is important, the leadership still needs to find ways to do this in a meaningful way. And then I will say something about some of the success factors that uh, play a role in quality culture. Generally, a successful approach to quality culture requires at least the engagement of the whole community, including students and administ administrative staff who are often forgotten in a process of reflection about missions and goals. It's also important to develop a communication strategy that combines top-down, bottom-up and horizontal communication channels, written documents and formal and informal meetings. A third success factor is the identification and empowerment of quality culture champions to contribute to the development and implementation of a quality culture strategy. So those lecturers and those departments that are doing especially well need to be encouraged to continue doing that and it needs to be showcased to their colleagues uh, what is successful and why it is successful and finding ways of making this uh, a success throughout the institution. The institutional leadership also needs to consider the issue of fear that exists with a lot of staff when it comes to implementing quality assurance and new quality measures and that should tackle this by developing a co coherent staff support and development scheme. It's also very important to make improvements visible to students and especially to show them what has been done with their feedback and if their feedback hasn't been used, what is the reason behind that. It's important to give concrete signals that their feedback and their participation are important. And finally, of course, it's important that there are appropriate human capacity and financial resources available within the institution to implement all the measures that are necessary to implement a true quality culture.